Africa is a land of stunning beauty and pathetic turmoil. The twin horrors of war and drought have ravaged much of this continent. A vast portion of this mighty land has been cast aside as a lost cause. A great number of people in Africa have embraced this sense of hopelessness. But Africa has a potentially bright future. She is rich in natural resources and her people rich in their cultural heritage. But most importantly, God has his eyes upon this place. His heart set towards this people. My name is Mike Francine, and I want to invite you to spend these next few moments with us. We'll take you on a journey into Africa and an African experience. Then we're going to go into our Cameroon Crusade, where scores of people received the Master's touch. Next, we're going to go into our Liberia campaign, where more than 100,000 people packed into the great stadium. There, in Liberia, heaven kissed a nation, and the multitudes responded to his love. After we've finished with this program, I trust that a sense of hope will grab your heart, the same as it has mine, for this great land, because we know somebody who specializes in winning lost causes. Africa and the African people are as diverse and different as the country is large. This huge continent is the second largest landmass on the planet. Exotic animals are widespread, although many are in danger of extinction. Many parts of Africa are emerging from the shadows of the past. Large cities are on the verge of competing in world market exports. Africa is rich in natural resources, and 20th century technology is quickly on the rise in some of these modern cities. But most of Africa is still comprised of small rural villages. Here, simple people eke out a very meager existence. Survival is the sole purpose of life for many of these villagers. Fishermen spend long days toiling with their trade. Sometimes the harvest is good, but many times they labor in vain. Mending nets can be a tedious task, but absolutely necessary in maintaining their livelihood. Even the simplest and most essential chores turn into long, tedious projects. Markets are always busy, as food for that day is purchased every morning. Even the preparation of meals is a time-consuming project. In village life, the gathering of water is often a burden, as the women may need to walk for miles to the nearest spring, pond, or river for this necessity of life. Often, the only water source of the village produces only a disease-laden drink, but it is all they have. Here in Africa, people work long and hard. Some farm, others weave baskets, while others sell trinkets or nuts, hoping to earn a small amount of money for food. Here, life is very simple and very uncertain. Africa's wounds run deep. Across wide stretches of parched lands, nature is silent and the nomadic Africans who have inhabited some of our planet's harshest environments are facing their most critical test of survival. They've survived droughts. They've survived European and Arab slave trade. They've survived colonialism. But the natural resources of Africa have been abused too long, and this once fertile land has become barren and unproductive.
Many countries are raping the land of their trees as massive deforestation escalates. Focusing on the present, they do not understand that they are stealing from the future. As this rich land is continually abused, devastation creeps further in. The land is ravaged by greed. Deforestation has serious consequences. Bare soil absorbs less sunlight, raising above ground temperatures and inhibiting plant growth. With fewer plants, less moisture is released into the air. Rainfall diminishes, wind whips off the topsoil, and the desert spreads. The result is low food production. Green fields have turned to blowing desert wasteland, and the rich culture which once was enough to sustain a civilization struggles to survive under the weight of famine and civil strife. The wounds of political and social unrest and nature's curse have brought parts of Africa to the brink of unprecedented crisis. Flash floods kill thousands, and in the wake of these natural disasters, people lose everything. When cycles of drought coincide with political upheaval, famine is the tragic byproduct. Today in Africa, many are feasting on famine as the hope of a future is lost. Food and other relief have poured into Africa along with a constant flow of social work and assistance. Yet the suffering continues. Only the liberating message of the gospel will free Africa from its suffering and bondage. These people are desperately looking for hope in what seems like a hopeless situation. Millions of impoverished refugees fleeing from war, leaving everything behind, many wearing only tree bark to cover their bodies. Africa's infant mortality rates are among the highest in the world. For the continent as a whole, of every 1,000 children born, 120 will die before their first birthday. Many in rain-starved areas are isolated by surrounding war. Those fleeing conflict often crowd into regions that cannot support them. Death camps are overburdened with people seeking help. Deadly diseases are stalking these people. Many of the diseases which are easily treated and avoided in the West are fatal agents of death here in Africa. Often doctors and even the simplest of medicines are non-existent. In some African countries, the life expectancy of that people is a mere 39 years of age. Mercy is held hostage in rebel-controlled countries. Ancient tribal rivalries have left war-torn regions void of hope as people scatter from their homelands in search of a refuge of peace. In countries like Liberia and Rwanda, bullet-riddled buildings stand as monuments to the strife and bloodshed of the rebel warlords. War, famine, and economies, which are broken, have cast a cloud of hopelessness and despair. The eyes portray an image of brokenness and futility of life. The plight of this people is harnessed to current conditions. The men they turn to for solutions vie for their loyalty, and to keep it, they cast fear upon the followers. Africans as a whole are a very religious and superstitious people. The northern countries are predominantly Muslim, while most of the others adhere to traditional African beliefs. Some are animists, worshiping animals and practicing deviant behavior with them. Ancestor worship is common, and millions more turn to voodoo and local witch doctors. They seek out these hearts of darkness for blessings, healings, and protection from evil spirits. Onlookers into these wicked services are captivated with fear. The local witch doctors take on demon spirits as their bodies begin to twist and contort into animal-like beings. Sadistic mutilation of their bodies serves to show the degree of power their black magic yields. Animals in their blood are used in the voodoo services. The wild-eyed, possessed priests and witch doctors do unthinkable acts, 
to the minds of those who live in the Western world. It is the fear which these evil proprietors produce that keeps the people coming back to them for spiritual guidance. Fearing the witch doctor's curse, many offer all their earthly possessions to them, while others even offer their children to be sacrificed upon his altar. Many in the world today will look at these people with eyes of pity or unbelief. Their vote would be cast, which would clearly say, there is no hope for this land. It was in this setting in which we pursued precious African people for the cause of Christ. With the liberating force of the gospel, we entered the nation of Cameroon, a land beyond sorrow. The message had to be one of hope in the midst of lost causes. The truth presented had to be confirmed with great displays of God's power. Both were accomplished as evangelist Mike Francine presented this powerful message to this land. Thousands attentively listened and received. Winning lost causes. Gagner des causes perdues. And I want to open up with Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Et je veux ouvrir dans Proverbes chapitre 13 le verset 12. The Bible says. La Bible dit that hope that is taken away makes the heart sick. Que euh, un espoir différé rend le cœur malade. When hope is taken away from a person's life. Quand le, quand l'espoir est enlevé du cœur d'une personne. When you have no hope that the bad things will ever change. Quand il n'y a plus d'espoir que quelque chose peut, peut se passer pour changer. When you have no hope that you'll ever be healed of your sickness or disease. Quand vous n'avez plus d'espoir que vous pouvez être guéri de vos maladies ou de vos infirmités. When you have no hope that there's ever that will ever be a difference in your life. Quand vous n'avez plus d'espoir qu'une différence peut se produire dans votre vie. When that hope is taken away. Quand cet espoir est donc différé. It makes your heart sick. Alors when you have no hope, Quand vous n'avez plus d'espoir, your heart becomes weak. Votre cœur s'affaiblit. The Bible says that hope taken makes the heart sick. La Bible dit que quand l'espoir est enlevé, alors le cœur est malade. And some of you this day, et certains d'entre vous ce soir, feel that there are causes in your life. Ont l'impression qu'il y a des causes dans la vie. That are lost causes. Qui sont des causes à jamais perdues. Maybe doctors have told you there's no hope for a cure of your sickness. Peut-être des docteurs vous ont dit qu'il n'y a plus d'espoir pour la guérison de votre maladie. Maybe you've gone to the doctors. Peut-être que vous allez au docteur. And they've looked at your crippled legs. Et ils regardent à vos pieds paralysés. And they said there's no hope. Et ils disent qu'il n'y a pas d'espoir. Your heart became sick. Et votre cœur devient malade. The doctors could do nothing for you. Les docteurs n'ont plus rien faire pour vous. But my message tonight is this. Mais mon message ce soir est celui-ci. That Jesus Christ. Que Jésus Christ. Has always specialized. Est toujours spécialisé. In winning lost causes. A gagner les causes perdues. Jesus specializes in winning lost causes. Jésus est There are some of you here tonight. Et il y a certains ici ce soir. That maybe you've done vile and wicked things. Peut-être que vous avez fait des choses mauvaises, méchantes. Maybe you've raped a woman. Peut-être que vous avez même euh, euh, forcé une femme. Maybe you've molested a child. Peut-être que vous avez molesté un enfant. Maybe you've murdered somebody. Peut-être que vous avez tué quelqu'un. Maybe you're a cheat. Peut-être que vous avez trompé. And you steal from people. Et vous avez volé des gens. And you say, is there any hope for me? Et vous de vous demandez, est-ce qu'il y a encore de l'espoir pour moi? Your heart has condemned you. Votre cœur vous condamne. For how terrible you feel you've been. Et vous vous demandez combien terrible vous êtes devenu. And you've looked at your life. Et vous regardez à votre vie. As a lost cause. Comme une cause à jamais perdue. Multitudes of people across this field tonight. Des multitudes de personnes sur ce stade aujourd'hui. In areas of your life, you feel that there's no hope. Il y a des stades de votre vie de, de, que vous Vous voyez qu'il n'y a plus d'espoir. The passage of time le, pa- le temps qui passe has stolen every bit of hope you could ever have. A enlevé tout ce que vous, qui vous restait comme espoir. You prayed for maybe a long time. Vous avez crié à, à plusieurs fois. You've tried every means possible. Vous avez essayé tous les moyens à votre portée. But still, hope has been taken from your heart. Mais toujours, il n'y a point d'espoir dans votre cœur. I want you to know tonight. Je voudrais que vous sachiez ce soir. This is God's word to you. C'est ça la parole de Dieu pour vous. The heart that has been made sick. Que les cœurs qui ont été rendus malades. Because hope has been stolen. Parce que l'espoir a disparu. God is saying to you this night. Dieu vous dit ce soir. That God is going to heal sick hearts. Que Dieu va guérir les cœurs malades. This night. Cette nuit. God is going to heal your sick heart. Dieu va guérir votre cœur malade. And restore hope to you. Il va restaurer l'espoir à votre Because cœur. hope is the very foundation of faith. Parce que l'espoir est une condition importante pour la foi. And faith is the key ingredient that releases your miracle from God.
Et la foi est l'ingrédient indispensable qui, qui vous permet d'avoir le miracle de Dieu. Are you ready to receive from God tonight? In Matthew chapter 8. Dans Matthieu chapitre 8. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. Quand Jésus était descendu de la montagne, une grande foule le suivait. And behold, there was a leper that came and worshipped him. Et voici un lépreux qui vint pour l'adorer. And said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me whole. Et lui dit, Seigneur, si tu le veux, tu peux me, tu peux me guérir. Medical science today. Des signes de miracles aujourd'hui. They have no cure for leprosy. Et euh, aujourd'hui, on ne peut pas guérir la lèpre. Leprosy was a lost cause. La lèpre est une cause perdue. In the eyes of the medical world. Aux yeux du monde médical. But this man came to Jesus. Mais cet homme est venu à Jésus. And he said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Et le Seigneur, si tu le veux, tu peux me purifier. And the Bible says that Jesus put his hand on him. Et la Bible dit que Jésus le toucha. And said, I am willing, be thou clean. Et lui dit, je le veux, sois pur. And immediately his leprosy left. Et aussitôt la lèpre le quitta. A lost cause. Une cause perdue. A lost cause. Une cause perdue. His condition physically. Voilà la condition physique cet homme. Was beyond hope. Qui était au-delà de tout espoir. For even in this day. Et en ce jour. Medical science has no cure for leprosy. La, la, la science médicale n'a aucune façon de guérir la lèpre. In the eyes of the world, the leper was a lost cause. Aux yeux du monde, la lèpre est une cause perdue. But Jesus specializes in winning lost Mais causes. Mais Jésus est spécialisé pour gagner des causes perdues. What is your condition this night? Quelle est ta condition cette nuit? What is it that you suffer with this day? Tu souffres de quoi en ce jour? Jesus Christ specializes in winning lost causes. Jésus Christ est spécialisé pour Tonight God is going to heal sick hearts. Ce soir Jésus va guérir des cœurs. And restore hope to you. Some of you here are suffering severely. Et certains parmi vous ici souffrent atrocement. And you feel there's no hope left in your life. Et vous pensez qu'il n'y a plus d'espoir pour vous. I want you to understand through gospel stories. Et je voudrais que vous compreniez cette histoire biblique. I want you to understand through testimonies I've seen. Et je voudrais que vous puissiez entendre ces témoignages. That yours is not a lost cause. Que votre cause n'est pas perdue. Because Jesus specializes in winning lost causes. Parce que Jésus est le pour moi. A few months ago we were in the nation of Tanzania. Et il y a quelques mois nous étions en Tanzanie. While we were there in Tanzania. Pendant que nous étions en Tanzanie, we were in the stadium. nous étions au stade. Thousands of people gathered together in the stadium. Des milliers de personnes étaient rassemblées depuis le sta day sur le stade. After day after day, miracles. Et jour après jour, il y avait des miracles. And there was a woman, Et il y avait une femme. An old Muslim woman. Une femme musulmane. She lived up in the mountainside. Elle vivait dans les montagnes. High up in the mountains. Elle vivait vraiment loin dans les montagnes. Every day, Et chaque jour, she heard people talking about miracles that were happening at the crusade. Elle entendit des gens parler au sujet des miracles qui se produisaient à la croisade. Now this old woman, alors cette vieille femme, for 30 years was bowed over. Pendant 30 ans, son dos était courbé. 30 years bent over. 30 ans, le dos était courbé. Unable to stand up. Elle n'était pas capable de se tenir. She walked with one hand on the ground. Elle marchait avec une main sur le sol. She couldn't stand and talk to somebody face to face. Elle ne pouvait pas se tenir debout et parler avec quelqu'un face à face. 30 years bowed over. 30 ans, elle était courbée. Unable to straighten her back. Incapable de redresser son dos. Unable to walk like a normal person. Incapable de marcher comme une personne normale. 30 years. 30 ans. Time had stolen hope from her life. Le temps avait volé l'espoir de sa vie. She had no hope. Elle n'avait plus d'espoir. Anything would ever be different. Que quelque chose puisse se passer. She tried religion. Elle avait essayé la religion. She tried the doctors. Elle avait essayé les docteurs. She tried everything that people knew. Elle avait essayé tout ce que les gens savaient. But hers was a life bowed over for 30 years. Mais son... She crawled. Elle a rampé. All day long to get pendant... to our crusade grounds. Pendant toute la journée afin d'atteindre le lieu de la croisade. She croisa. crawled inside the stadium. Elle a rampé jusqu'au stade. She sat over by this edge of the, the platform. Et elle était juste à ce niveau de la plateforme. Hers was a lost cause. Alors ça c'est une cause. 30 years bowed over. 30 ans courbé. Nothing anybody could do for her. Il n'y a rien que personne pouvait faire. A lost faire. cause for 30 years. C'était une cause perdue pendant 30 ans. No, she had crawled all day on her hands and feet. Alors ce jour-là, pendant toute la journée, elle avait rampé avec les mains et les genoux. She listened to me preach about Jesus. Elle m'a entendu prêcher au sujet de Jésus. And hope came to her heart. Et l'espoir vint dans son cœur. Maybe God will do something for me. Elle s'est dit peut-être Dieu peut faire quelque chose and pour moi. And as I preached the word. Alors pendant que je prêchais la parole. The seed of the word of God was planted in her being. La semence de la parole de 
Dieu était semaine dans son être. And that night, as I began to pray for the sick, cette nuit, pendant que je commençais à prier this pour old la crippled woman, alors cette vieille femme, who had not stood for 30 years, qui avait été incapable de se dresser, who crawled on her hands and knees all day to get to the stadium, qui avait rampé avec les mains et les genoux pour arriver sur le lieu de la croisade, felt God come through her head. Elle a entendu Dieu venir sur elle. God go through her body. Et la puissance de Dieu allait dans son corps. The healing power of God go through her legs. Et la puissance de Dieu qui atteint ses pieds. She began to stand to her feet. Et elle a commencé à se tenir sur ses pieds. She was standing like this. Et elle se tenait comme ça. And then for the first time et in 30 la, years. Et pour la première fois depuis 30 ans. She stood up straight. Elle se redressait. And began to walk. Et elle a commencé à marcher. She was a cripple anymore. Et Just as it was in the book of Acts, signs and wonders accompanied the preaching of the word of God. The truth was presented, the gospel confirmed, and Christ was embraced by thousands, liberating them from what previously was counted as lost causes. Overwhelmed with joy, this woman testified to the vast audience and proclaimed that for more than 10 years, her legs were crippled. With joy, she danced and demonstrated her healing. For six years, she suffered with tuberculosis. Many hospital visits relieved her of her money, but the dreaded disease remained. As the evangelist prayed, she felt a heat and burning sensation go through her chest. This night, Jesus healed her, and she spoke of his goodness. For more than two years, her legs were crippled, and as she demonstrated her miracle, the crowd rejoiced. She arrived at the crusade on crutches, but joyfully she would walk home without them. Doctors thought this woman to be pregnant with child, but they discovered the enlarged stomach was not a child, but rather it was from eight orange-sized tumors in her belly. As prayer was offered, her body began to shake under the power of God. Suddenly she looked down and the tumors were gone. This young man had been deaf and dumb for years. He sold cigarettes from a little basket on the street corner across from a woman's shop. He sells cigarettes in front of my office. Okay, he vend, he vend les cigarettes en face de son bureau. He doesn't talk, he doesn't hear. Il ne parle pas, il n'entend rien. If you send him, you have to write everything because he doesn't hear what you're saying and he doesn't know what you're talking about. Pour l'envoyer, il faut lui donner un bout de papier écrit parce qu'il n'entendra pas ce que vous dites. After the prayer, I called his name and he answered that. Okay, that's good. Et après la prière, j'ai appelé son nom et il a répondu. I said, say Jesus. J'ai dit, dit Jésus. He mumbled something else and I'm like, Jesus, that's already a start. Alors, il a murmuré quelque chose comme Jésus. Ça, c'est déjà le début parce qu'il n'entendait rien. I called his name and he called it back to me. And I knew that God had done it. For the first time in years, he was able to speak his first words and hear. This precious African woman told her dramatic and familiar story to the multitudes who were gathered. When she was six years old, her parents had wed her to a demon spirit. She explained to the audience that for years, the demon spirit would come into her room every night. When it arrived, her body would be paralyzed as the demon spirit would rape her. The night before, she came to the crusade and accepted Jesus. When she went home that night, once again the demon spirit came into her room. But this time, she was not paralyzed. The demon spoke to her and said to her, Because you accepted Jesus, I will no longer have anything to do with you. Great joy in her face clearly shows her freedom. The crowd cheered at the testimony. I'm so happy that God heard me a sinner, and he opened my deaf ears. The once deaf man testified. Wholeheartedly, he received Jesus. The healing Christ caused this woman's grapefruit-sized tumor to instantly disappear. Earlier this day, this man checked himself out of a local hospital to attend the crusade. He lied to the doctors and told them he was healed, so they would release him. As prayer was offered for the sick, this night a miracle took place, and his back and neck were instantly healed. For 40 years, this dear old woman had suffered many things from many physicians. Her illness even brought her to hospitals in Europe, but there was nothing they could do. Over the years, she had sought out more than 300 witch doctors. Nothing changed. 
But this night, the unchanging Christ radically changed her life as miracle healing became hers. Expressions of joy turned into dancing as she looked forward to her tomorrows. With unspeakable joy, she testified of the miracle healing that she received in her legs. Once again, the crowd broke into song and dance. Did you shout hallelujah? Okay, Mama, thank you for coming. Twelve years earlier, this lady was hit by a stray bullet. The wound caused her right arm to be paralyzed. She had not been able to raise her arm for 12 years. Jesus healed her lost cause this night. This night of the crusade, a teacher from the deaf and dumb school in Douala brought two of his students. Both of these boys were born deaf and dumb. The teacher testified that they had never heard and made a sound in their lives. As the boys repeated simple words, the crowd cheered. A joyful celebration erupted. Thousands began to sing and dance as they celebrated Jesus and His works. of a nation is an extreme thought and bold initiative. Yet the Monrovia Liberia Crusade touched the borders of this realization. We arrived in this West African country with great hopes and expectations of what God was about to do. Transcending our ideas of paramount success, he did exceedingly abundantly above what we could ask or even think. For six years, the warlords and the rebel groupies had tormented the countryside, leaving in their wake the ruins of a cherished people. Left desolate of hope, theirs was determined to be a lost cause. But once again, the unchanging Christ brought hope to a nation of healing to their people. This man's leg had been crippled for years. The crowd cheered with great excitement as he demonstrated his miracle with great exuberance. This woman was brought to the crusade blind and deaf for two years. Now delivered, she proclaims her victory. The powerful testimony of this woman who was healed of eight long years of deafness caused the audience to once again break into song. This young man was born with his left arm and leg crippled. Here, he hoists a chair high over his head. No longer is his left side paralyzed. This woman's child was born with no muscles in its neck. The child was taken to many witch doctors, but still she had never been able to pick up her head or turn its neck. 
During the healing prayer, a miracle forever changed the future of this little girl. Now she holds her head up for the first time in 10 months. Mama, is that the truth? That's the truth. The Liberia Crusade drew crowds in excess of 100,000 people. The government radio station broadcast a crusade live across the entire country. Newspapers carried front page headlines and center spreads of miracle testimony pictures. Ten days after the campaign was over, the mayor of Monrovia called me at my office in the United States and pleaded for our return. In Liberia, heaven kissed a nation and the multitude responded to his love. <laughs> 